the man who prepared Obama for the presidency. Read his book, The Grand Chessboard. Read his books. He articulates the threat, the sole threat, the only threat to global world white supremacy, the one world order. He says in his own words that the only thing that threatens this thing of ours is the operational, economic, and political coming together of Africans from Africa and those from Europe, Canada, and the United States. In other words, the burden of Pan-Africanism, ironically, is not on Africa. The burden of Pan-Africanism is on us outside of Africa. We are the solution, not from an arrogant, elitist standpoint, but from an economic, educational standpoint. When you look at the gross national product of Africans in the UK, even with our economic problems, you right here in the UK gross more than 80% of the African countries on the continent. Even with our economic problems in America, we're the richest group of Africans on the face of the earth. So when we say Africa for the Africans, yes. we need to understand that that will never be a reality without the financial support of the UK, the United States, and the Canadas. But the question becomes, how long do we wait? As the sister who spoke early, we don't like those conversations, but that queen who spoke early, those are the conversations we like to have, the, the, we need to have the uncomfortable conversations about putting your money where your mouth is. The cultural part of Pan-Africanism, we got that. The historical part of Pan-Africanism, we got that. The spiritual side, we got that. But the economic side is still lacking. We're Pan-Africanism in name and in ceremony. We are not Pan-Africanists in practice. If we want to get those African countries to sign off on universal dual citizenship for everyone outside the continent, we got to give them something to put their faith in. We got to be able to say, guess what? Here's 10 million pounds. We want our own bank in the continent and we want dual citizenship with the 10 million pounds. Then you get it. The problem with the African Union is that most countries who belong to it, which is just about everyone except Morocco and one other, is that they're dependent on America and the British Crown for economic support. So how do you expect them to pass universal dual citizenship when they need your oppressor to help them keep the country running. The only way you're gonna change that is if you replace the oppressor as a source of financial incubation. If we don't put the money where our mouth is, we are gonna die. Ain't no plan with it. You see what's going on in America? I just got a news feed while I'm sitting over here. Police officer in Cleveland where I was a few weeks ago shot two men, 167 bullets in the, in the police, excuse me, the court. This happened about a year or two ago, but the court yesterday or the day before found him totally innocent of the charges. He stood on top of a car, the cop, stood on top of the car and blasted through the windshield 167 times from what I'm reading. He walks free. Black folk in America got a problem too. You know why? Because they hate what's happening right now. But they still love the white man too much to even consider thinking about homeland. You ain't no different. All the hell you catch in the UK, you will not fix your senses remotely on even considering going to hell back home. And when we talk about repatriation, we not talking about running away from your problems. Because the white man is everywhere, so let's be clear. Repatriation is not no utopian vision. 
Repatriation says, I know I got to deal with the cracker back home too. But the difference between dealing with the cracker in Africa and the cracker in the UK is I got a whole lot more manpower in Africa than I got in the UK. That's what we say. And if our brothers and sisters in Africa see that we are serious, they will fight with us. But they got to know we serious. Because you know what they told me in Ghana? You know what they told me in South Africa? You know what they told me in Senegal and Nigeria? What they told me in Ethiopia and Morocco? They said, you guys talk really well. I'm going to tell you what they told me. They said, y'all talk really well. Intellectually, y'all got it. But when it comes to sustained output and progress, you're very low with that. Y'all have the slogans and the mantra. Y'all can even come up.